Hey, hello everybody. Yep, uh, welcome to this uh, live uh, market forecast uh, webinar. Uh, so today's session, right, uh, we'll have a Colin, Xiao, uh, and uh, Jay Toon, right? So uh, right now it's uh, 7.55 and we will start at 8 p.m. sharp. So let's just wait five minutes, okay? Anyway, uh, we will have a Q&A uh, down at the bottom somewhere in your uh, browser where you can actually type uh, your questions if you have any. So our speakers will try their best to answer your questions. Uh, okay? Anyway, uh, you can actually type uh, inside the chat if you want to let me know uh, anything as well. Hi, everyone. You will see a prompt very soon on the chat box. Okay? Do you guys see it? Hello. Hi, everybody. Okay, forty. Yeah, four more minutes. <laughs> Hi. By the way, I'm Ethan from Investing Note, and uh, welcome to the live uh, market uh, forecast webinar. All right. We will start at 8 p.m. for those of you who are just joined. Okay. And joining us today, we have Colin. Colin, you want to say something? He will show his screen later. Hi, everyone. This is Colin here. Uh, good to see everyone yeah. here. Excited that we are starting our event later. Can you all hear me? Loud and clear for me. Yeah. Anyway, for those of you all uh, who cannot hear, right, uh, you can actually type the message uh, in the chat and let me know so we can try to, you know, uh, tune up the volume. Okay, you can hear good. Yeah, if you uh, have a earpiece, we will recommend you to use the earpiece. Okay, thank you. Okay, we will start in two minutes, okay? Hope everybody is safe from the, you know, virus situation. Yeah, uh, yes, no picture because uh, we haven't started the thing yet. At eight o'clock. <laughs> don't worry, don't worry. You, have, you will see the image. Hi, Shanison. Is it the first time we are doing this? Uh, yes. <laughs> Live webinar. Okay, good. <laughs> I hope everybody will have a fruitful takeaway with uh, Colin and Jay Dune later as well. Okay. Hi. Okay, one more minute. Colin will show his face, don't worry. <laughs> and he will show uh, whatever he needs to show in the presentation as well. Okay. Okay, one minute. Okay. Colin, perhaps you can start the video. Lah. Okay. Okay, can you see, can you see Colin? Hi. Yeah, okay, great, 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 great. Okay, let's start the, the presentation proper. And okay. uh, just a keynote, right? Uh, if anybody has any Q&A, right, just type it in the Q&A box. Not this chat box, uh, Q&A box. Okay? You can locate it in the buttons below. Okay, thank you. Let's okay. start. Okay, thanks, Ethan. Thanks, yeah. everyone. Thanks, uh, Shanison, for inviting me. Thanks, Investing Note, for inviting me. Okay, today, uh, we are 
I went through the notes, okay, it'll be a bit short of time, but hopefully at the end of the day, I can add some value to you all. You all can uh, get some value out of this. Okay, so let's get started very quickly. Okay, first, first thing, disclaimer, okay, whatever I share with you all is for education purpose. It's not advice to buy and sell. If you do not use, if, uh, if you use this, you know, uh, make sure that you, uh, uh, make sure that you put in your stop loss and also uh, know what you're doing, okay? If you're you not sure, I think it's good that you ask first, okay? At the end of the day, uh, whatever I share with you all, the most important thing is to take action, okay? You, you, you should actually learn, learn how to at least go and uh, look at the charts to see how it can help you. Um, this is only for people who are interested in swing trading. This is not for investing. If you are looking for long-term investment, this, this thing is not for you. Uh, this is more, more towards swing trading. Uh, I'll define swing trading later. Uh, more between a period of one week or up to a month. Okay, that will be a definition of swing trade. Okay, so let's get started. Um, okay, at the, end of the, at the end of today, maybe the last five minutes, okay, I'll show you an offer. Uh, is that fair? I will give you an amazing offer, but I want to, uh, at the, end of the last five minutes, just to show you what I have for you all. Okay, if it's fair, you can type in check box, it's fair. Okay, I'll move on because time is short, okay? So, uh, uh, I will assume that most of you all are, quite a lot of you all are not, not really savvy, so I'll start from really the basics, okay? So, I want to first talk about the three types of indicators. Uh, how many here are familiar with indicators? If you're familiar, you can type in the chat box. Yes, if you're not familiar, say no, okay? Okay, so there are three types of indicators. We have trend following indicators. Example, trend following indicators are like moving average. Then we have oscillators. Uh, oscillators are things that move up and down and they plot, plotted away from the charts and then they are uh, on a separate window. And then the last one is miscellaneous. Okay, so if you all are familiar with indicators, type yes. If you're not familiar, type no in the chat box. Oh, do you have a chat box? No, uh. Okay, never mind. Let me continue. So um, let's talk about the first thing first. We study when we study trends. Okay, we want to look at three things. First thing is the trend. Where is the uh, where's the trend? Is it going from high tide or high trend to low trend or low trend to high trend? Okay, it means you need to know where is the trend going first. Okay, second one is the wave. So when the tide is going from low to high it is possible that the wave can still go up and down. Okay, when going from low to high, it can still go up and down. Like example, recently the market is down, right? We have downtrend, but it's, it's still possible to have minor retracement. That means in the, when the tide is going from high to low, then it's possible that the wave also go up. Okay, so that is for wave, okay? Next is uh, moving average. Uh, um, moving average is basically the average price of a security any even time, okay, you can actually Google to find out how moving average work. Basically, is to learn how to understand what is the trend right now, okay? Uh, Ethan, can they see the chat box? Uh? No, right? Yes, they can. They okay. can see the chat box. Yeah. Okay, chat box, uh. okay so, um, okay, good, good. All right, sorry, I didn't see the chat box. Okay, good. Thanks for, thanks, thanks for your response. Okay, so next, uh, Okay, next we have CCI. So CCI is to understand, but I use CCI, okay? So there are the other oscillators we have like RSI, uh, Stochastic, uh, but I like to use CCI. So I use moving average to understand the type, to look at the type, and then CCI to look at the wave, okay? So uh, um, similarly to the type, right? When the type is going from low to high, it's possible that the wave can go from high to low or low to high. Okay, later I'll show you on the chart that it makes sense to you. Okay, so before I go into the actual uh, setup, before I go into the actual setup, I want to share with you all this thing first, okay, which is actually the plan, okay, which is the trade plan. Okay, so uh, the definition with trade, if trading is you need to have this, then it's considered trading. If you don't have this, then it's not trading. Okay, so what is a, this, this thing that you need? Okay, first thing when you want to trade, you need to have the entry price. You need to have a precise price that you want to enter. Okay, you want to have a take profit price when you want to sell. Okay, then you need to have a stop loss price when you're to cut loss. If your your this 
um, assumption is wrong, if this view is wrong, when do you cut loss? And last one is time frame. How long are you going to be in this trade for? Okay, so these four things need to be, you need to know this before you enter the trade. Okay, that means you need to know exactly where I want to get in and when I want to get out, where I want to cut loss and things like that. The reason being is very simple because when you're doing trading, basically you're doing risk reward. Okay, that means uh, when you enter, when you enter, uh, after you enter, what is the potential profit you can take? Okay, versus the potential loss you take. So the risk reward, okay, uh, some of the trading strategy can be like one to one or two to one, things like that. So you need to have a positive risk reward in general. Okay, and then the second thing, you also need to have your probability. That means at the end of the day, uh, when you enter already, what's the probability after using this strategy, what's the probability that you hit your target price, what's the probability that you hit your stop loss price. Then that is trading. Do you follow what I'm saying? If you say, uh, I just want to buy, and then if you drop some more, I buy some more, and I, I will never sell, then this is not considered trading. This is just investing or other ways of doing it. Trading always have a, a precise entry and stop loss, okay? And that game. Okay, so with that, you can actually calculate the profit ratio, uh, the payoff ratio. That means, uh, why is your payoff ratio? It means you're correct how much percentage do you actually make, okay? versus how much percentage you actually lose if you're wrong. So far, any question? So far, I'm covering just basic. Uh, uh, any question? Okay, well, one question, how to use TA to tell you where's the bottom? Later, I hope I got time to answer this, okay? So I want to share you this strategy. This is how the strategy works, okay? Basically, uh, the idea is when a stock is on a strong uptrend, it pull back to retest a rising MA, the traders go into a buy mode. Okay, when the stock is on a strong downtrend, it rally back to retest the declining MA, it goes into a sell mode. So I'll go into detail of this strategy. Okay, so first thing first, okay, when, when the stock is on a strong uptrend, okay, what it means you would use a two moving average, later I'll, I'll tell you the exact parameters, but you to use two moving average to determine the trend first. Okay, this trend, this moving average I'm going to talk about is 20 and 40 moving average. On the daily chart, okay, this is the 20 and 40 daily chart or 20 and 40 weekly chart. This is to understand, this to help us to identify whether it's going from low to high or high to low. Okay, uh, and how you look at it is when it's uptrend, the 20 is above, above the 40, when it's downtrend, 20 is below the 40. Okay, a lot of people, they buy stock, they don't know what's the trend, okay? Like the stock is like crashing and then they just rush in and buy, okay? Sometimes, uh, because the market, it may be trending like, now it's downtrend, right? So if the market is trending, low can go lower. Do you feel like I'm saying like, oh, today crash already, you know, tomorrow, a few days later, it may continue to go down lower, okay? So if you just rush in while it's coming down, okay, then that may be it. Uh, your, your low price that is right now can be lower later. Do you feel like I'm saying? Okay? So what you want to do is you want to be able to see whether the downtrend has completed. That means no longer downtrend, okay? Start to go into a sideways trend. It's starting to go into uptrend, maybe early part of uptrend, then you get in. Do you know what I'm saying? Okay, so um, yeah, if you don't do that, okay, so what will happen is it may, it may be possible that when the market goes down, you can continue to uh, buy and buy and buy and, and market continue to go down and continue to lose money. That will cause you a lot of pain uh, or opportunity cost. Okay. So uh, this is the idea. Okay. This is the idea of how this thing works. Uh, frankly, you asked me, half an hour is definitely not enough time to go through the whole trading setup. It's really rushing in. Okay. Do you all uh, ever heard of this thing called little knowledge is dangerous? Uh? So I got this concern that little knowledge is dangerous. Uh, so the, the, the minimum, okay, for your, I hope that at the end of the day, for any stock, you can look at it and say, oh, this stock for the next one week is going up or down. Next, this stock for the next one month is going up or down. I hope uh, with your takeaway, right, you can actually look at any stock and know that it is going up or down in the next one week or it's going up or down for the next one month, okay? You will know that, okay? So, um, okay, so 
if you are looking at daily charts, okay, if you are looking at daily charts, then uh, if you have questions right pertaining to the class one, we can type in the Q and A. Okay, so is uh, if you have participation, then you can type in the chat. Okay, so uh, just want to answer that question is uh, daily charts. Okay, daily charts. That means you are looking at the the trend on the daily charts. Okay, um, that means each swing. Okay, each swing. That means like looking from here, each swing should be about one week. Okay, that means from down. Is one week up, is one week down, is one week up, is one week. Do you follow what I'm saying? This is daily chart. Any question? When you're looking at weekly charts, then this same MA again 20 week moving average, 40 week moving average, but then one swing is about one month. So one month, one month, one month, one month, one month. Do you follow what I'm saying? Okay, Victor, the question I can answer only later because let me finish up everything first and hopefully more time I can answer your that particular question. The rest, okay? Let me move on because almost time, half time already, okay? So, I, okay, let's, let's talk about setup. Okay, so the setup is like that. Okay, so we have these five parameters that we need to go through. One, two, three, four, five, okay? And uh, let me go through the first one. First one is scoping up moving average to determine whether the trend is up or down. Okay, second one is 20 is above the 40. That's why I mentioned this before. Okay, the, the shorter moving average above the longer one. Then third one is CCI. CCI is the oscillator. Okay, so the CCI uh, very important. We do not use the standard CCI. The standard CCI is 20, 20. I'll, I'll change this CCI to 5. Okay, CCI we change to five. The reason why we change to five is very simple because when I look at CCI five, one swing is five days. So it means the last five days we drop. Do you feel what I'm saying? So I want to look at CCI five here for, the, for this. Okay, if it's one week, I also want to look for CCI five also. Weekly chart also CCI five. Reason being is I want to look at the last one month. Okay, what is the drop over here? Okay, so uh, both for daily charts and weekly charts, the CCI is also five. Okay. Then uh, next one is low will touch the 20 MA and uh, goes above, but or goes below 20 MA. So the first line over here, this uh, 20 MA, which is the first line over here, this line can, the price can go below this line. Okay, the price can go below this line, but it cannot go below the second line, which is the 40 MA. Okay, so if it's uptrend, it must always be above, the price must always be above the Second line, which is the 40 MA, okay? But it can short term, it can drop below the first MA, which is the 20 MA, okay? Then the close above the 40 MA. So at any point of time, the closing price is uh, always above the 40 MA. When it drops below the 40 MA, like example here, when it drops below the 40 MA, okay? Then the, the trade is out already. You cannot actually uh, go long anymore. Okay, later I'll show you on the chart, okay? So, any questions so far? Okay, so this setup, right, to, is to identify whether it's up or down trend. If, if we have time, I seriously doubt we have time to look at stocks, but if we really have time, I can actually show you that whether the stock is up or down trend. Okay, then whether you should be buying on, buying on dips over here or selling on strength over here. Okay, then we can go through that individual charts, okay? So after you have that setup, after you have this setup, then this will be the next step, okay? This will be the next step to get in for a trigger, okay? This will get in for a trigger. So Kevin asked, why is it 20 to 40 MA? Okay, this 20 to 40 MA, 20 represent the traders, okay? Traders, they are in for about maybe five to 10 days, okay? Five to 10 days, they are the traders. They, you can use the 20 MA to see whether the traders are in or out of the market. Okay, the 40 or 50 MA, we, the technical analysts use it to represent the big boys, okay, the institution. Okay, so if the price drop below the 40 MA, that means the big boys are up already. That means they are no longer inside the stock. Okay, so look over here. If the price drop below the 20 MA, that's trader selling. They are taking profit. Okay, but is above the 40 MA. Why? Because the long term investors are still in, the, the institution are still in, that's why the price will not drop below the uh, will not drop, drop below the 40 MA. Do you all follow what I'm saying? 
Okay, Gavin, does that answer your question? Okay, so um, maybe I can just ask you the first question. How to know the TA whether the, it is bottom? I just show you a very crude method right now. Okay, how to know whether it is bottom is to, you can use this 20 and 40 MA. Okay, when it's still stopping down, you look at it. You look at right now the Hang Seng market, the S&P, the STI, all the MA are stopping on the daily charts. Okay, when does it turn? Okay, it turns when it changes. Okay, that means from here, it goes back up the 20 above the 40. Okay, like this way. Okay, then we know that oh, after, we cannot know the bottom when the price is going down. Do you offline saying, for example, when we are here, hey, we say, hey, this is very low, eh? maybe after that it rebound. It can rebound a bit, but after it can continue to go lower. Do you follow what I'm saying? So when it is going down, we will never know that whether, where is the bottom? Is the bottom here? Is the bottom here? Is the bottom here? We do not know. Even when this is the lowest point, at that point, we do not know whether it's the lowest point. Does it make sense or not? Okay. If we will only know if it's the lowest point after when the price start to go higher. It means that from here, the price go higher, okay? And form a, what we call a higher high. So I join from here, right? Form a higher high, higher low. Then we know, oh, here is the bottom. So maybe at this point, at this point here, okay? Then we will know, oh, that was the bottom over here. Do you follow what I'm saying? So uh, the simple question is to wait for the MA to turn, that means the 2040 MA to turn the other way around to start to slope up. The second way, you can also draw a trend line, you can draw line down, join all the tops to get together, and then draw a trend line down, and then when the trend line break, this can give you a potential indication that price is changing. Do you follow what I'm saying? No way you can see right now price on the daily charts, it is uptrend, okay, it's all downtrend, okay, right now, okay? Any question? I am uh, a bit concerned because if I just teach half and teach half, it's very risky, okay? Because this is really short-term trading, it's only like one week trade or one month trade. Uh, and then there's a way to actually get into the trade, put a stop loss and things like that. Uh, I hope that uh, at least you know, at least you know how to see trend, okay? At least you know how to uh, know what is CCI, okay? So uh, for us, 2040 is exactly the same. Hong Kong market, US market, Singapore market, all the same, you 2040, okay? Is it too hard to answer is no, okay? You can use the 2040, go back and check your chart. Okay, let me move on, okay? So I will do my best to finish up, okay? Then after you have this file set up, you will do a trigger, that means when to get in, okay? When to get in the chart, okay? That will be called a trigger, how to get in to know that, hey, the down move has completed and now it's going back up again. So from here, where the price is going down, how to, because when it's going down, you do not know whether it will break through or not, it will go lower or not. So how to know that, hey, this is the turning point, get in here and then do a swing over here. Get in here and do a swing over here. How to know that? Use the prior candle, okay, you do the prior candle uh, as the an indication, the high price of the prior candle as an as a, as a indication to get in, okay? So there is no lagging indicator in it, leading indicator, all are lagging indicators, okay? Indicators are based on price, okay? So all, everything is based on price, so we have leading on the lagging indicator. So uh, don't be so concerned about the indicator itself, okay? The indicator itself is just to tell you something, that means to tell you what is the trend, okay? You don't need a leading indicator, okay? You, what you need is to tell you what is it trying to tell me right now, I think that's the most important, okay? So uh, let's go to the setup. Okay, the setup is like that. So to identify, okay, so the price will go through day by day. Okay, to go through day by day. And let's say example, when the price drop, okay, let's drop over here. You can see this uh, price drop over here. At this period, you do not have this, all these prices over here. Okay, you only have this day over here. You check the indicator 20 above 40 CCI low. Okay, so the CCI low is to tell you that short term, there is a pullback, okay? Short term, there is a pullback right now, okay? Mm -hmm. Then after that, how to actually enter is, you will see that, okay, after the short term pullback into this MA, must make sure that it doesn't block, go below the 40 MA, okay? It must still be above the 40 MA, so that we know that the uptrend is still in play. If the price next day, if it like that, the, the setup is still valid, okay, it's still valid. If the price continue to go here, it's still valid, 
But if the price drop below the 40 MA, that means the, the setup is no longer valid. Any question? Okay, so after you have this setup ready, you get ready to buy, then when do you take action is when this thing start to turn up again, the swing high again. Okay, that's when you swing high again. So you use the high of the prior bar to actually get into the position. Okay, so in this case, when you start to, when the price, okay, every day you have a new price, and if the price that day goes above the high, okay, not the close, but the high of the previous bar, okay, or the previous bar, let's say, number the previous bar is here. Let's say we have this day trading, the previous bar is here, the high price is 93 cents. So next day it didn't go above 93 cents, you don't buy. Okay, this one, the high is 92 cents, so it didn't go above the high, you don't buy. This one is 92 cents. Next day, it went 93 cents. So you buy because it went above 92 cents. So this is your trigger. Get into the position to the stop. And after that, um, you put a trigger. This one I mentioned already. And then you put a stop loss. Okay, after you enter the stop, okay, the idea is after you enter this swing over here, which is the buy here, okay, you will put a stop loss below the swing, which is buy here. You will put the stop loss below here. Okay, the stop loss will actually be one cent below the prior bar low. Okay, so you look at the swing low or the prior bar low, that will be your stop loss. So in this case, you will enter here, your stop loss will be the lowest point in this down move is here. So you slightly below this down move will be your stop loss. Any question? First thing I'll share with you all, this strategy, I use it for the last, almost 20 years, okay? I mean, really, at least 15 years, I've used this setup for the last 15 years. Uh, this setup, I've taught many traders, prop traders, uh, fund managers. I've trained prop traders in Philip Capital. Uh, they have a prop trading team and they use uh, the strategy that I talk about, okay? And they have a success, okay? They are people that, I cannot show you the proof right now because not enough time. Uh, if you have time, I can show you what are the proof of people who have used swing trade to be profitable, okay? Um, using this strategy, okay? So the next one is take profit. How do you take profit, okay? Once you have the enter entry ready, the take profit will be the swing high. So the idea is once you enter this position, then enter this position over here, as the price break the resistance, which is the, this, this is a swing high, as you go higher, you can start to take profit. This move over here will be about five days, okay? About five days, okay? Within five days, you will take it out of the position. If you are looking at weekly charts, so it's 2040 weeks, then it will be five uh, weeks. So about a month time, then you will lock in the position. Okay, as you go higher, you will lock in the high, high price. Okay, so um, okay, so that will be the stop loss. The stop loss will actually be the swing low or of the or the swing low over here. I want to ask any question over here. Okay, so um, how do you set stop? Do you don't do trailing stop? Okay, don't need to do trailing stop. Okay, all you need to do is just to use the prior swing as a stop. Okay, if you are uh, you want to find out more because I do uh, I do post up like estimation. I, I'm trying to use the estimation thing to help me. If you want to find out like uh, real time, what are the stocks that are having this particular setup, you can go to my profile and then you can see the estimation and things like that. I will put up uh, real-time uh, swing trade setups, okay, that, that, that have this particular setup. Okay, I'll do my best to post up maybe daily or at least one week, at least two or three times, uh, post up all this trade setup. And then you'll do your trade, you'll do your own stop loss and things like that, okay? So um, that is the best way to learn because frankly, really, Half an hour is really too difficult to teach this, okay? But I hope that you all can get uh, some value out of this. Uh, this strategy, this exact strategy is also um, in a book called Secrets of Highly Profitable Traders. Uh, this book end, went on many years ago uh, to, be, to become a uh, Singapore best-selling book for consecutively 24 weeks, okay? This one strategy alone, okay? Um, okay, it's in this it's in this sequence. Okay, guys, this is like the mi ji yeah. This is like the formula. Okay, this is the formula. This is how you do. You do step one first. Once the price fulfill all the criteria, like a checklist, then you go to step two. 
once it's fulfilled all the criteria, then go to step three. Understand? Okay. So I think I almost run out of time already, Ethan, right? <laughs> okay. Uh yeah, you have five minutes. Five minutes, I it's almost yeah. uh, sorry I'm rushing through. I am really, really, really afraid that some people will take this and uh I need I wish I had more time with you all that I can really, really spend time to go through things that really can make the thing even better, okay? Uh, there are things that I, I didn't cover uh, that can be more detailed, okay? Then you can also use the same setup for cell, okay? That means the, the setup is just reverse, okay? Just to reverse, okay? Uh, just use this, okay? And then this is the summary, okay? So you want to, you can take a picture, huh? Take a picture. This is the summary, okay, of the string trace. Uh, actually, don't need to take lah. It's a oh, recorded video. Right. <laughs> yeah, the video. Okay, so this will be the string trace setup. Okay, I'm gonna just take one or two questions, then I will go through the offer. Okay. How how which platform does stop loss? Uh, quite a lot of platform already do stop loss. So you you must look for this kind of order called stop limit order. Okay, stop limit order or stop market order. Okay, either this kind of orders. Okay, so you must check the broker whether to do stop limit order or stop market order. Okay. Okay, so I have this, I'm gonna I have this offer together with investing note. Okay, investing note uh is together with me. We're gonna do this uh, two hours where I can spend more time okay explaining how the swing trade setup works. Okay, frankly, I uh short changing your by just to doing this thing okay so but i hope that if i have two hours you have a smaller class we can actually go through more in detail more back and forth okay you can ask question i can show you live charts then i can show you exactly what stock you know like apple you know like uh or singapore stocks you know what are the stocks that have this particular setup and how to look for this setup over there then i also go through a gmma if you do not know how to read trend, okay, just this one indicator will do. Okay, the GMMA is so so simple. Okay, not two lines. Okay, it's a bunch of lines, but it just help you to identify where to protect your profit. How to know that trend change? Okay, how to protect your profit? Exactly when to get out. Okay, if you are holding even for long term, there must be a way to get out. Okay, so how to exit that? And then I'll show you also a back-tested method. Okay, it's an indicator. It's not proprietary. That means you can go back to any free platform. I will show you exactly how to plot this in indicator on your chart. I back-tested it. If you trade it using the US index, it's very, very profitable. Uh, using this, just one indicator to tell you exactly where to get in and get out. This US uh, K wave indicator is a long term indicator. It's not a short term indicator, it's a long term indicator. Okay, I'll show you exactly how to plot the indicator on any free platform. Okay, by the way, all this strategy I share with you all, okay, is available on all free platforms. Okay, okay, I can even show you what the platform that you can use, okay, to, to plot in all these charts. Okay, next is a last one. Okay, this live webinar will be about two hours, which I will go through all this strategy I shared with you all just now. Uh, the reason why I do this is, is uh, the reason I do this is, uh, this, by the way, this, this live webinar will be at $18. The reason why I do this is not I want to make your $18, uh, frankly. Okay, I just want to see people who are really serious, that we want to learn and take action, you know, and, and, and be able to use this profitably. Okay, and then only, must take action now. Okay? You must go back and you must test it yourself. You must see hey, whether it's profitable and things like that. So go to this website. Actually, it's the, it's the investing note website. Go to this website called bit.ly, okay, slash traders GPS. Okay, then, uh, then you pay to investing note. Okay, it's for $18 uh, for these two hours of training. Okay, in this two hour training, I'll tell you exactly when to get in, when to get out, whether it's for short term. Okay, short term is for swing trade. Okay, then medium term is actually for JMME, you can do medium term, and then long term will be for K-Wave. It's, a, it's, a, it's, not a pro, it's not a standard indicator, but we will change the parameters to give you that, that result that you want, okay? Yes, we are 10 seconds away. So the end, I have reached my time. Okay, so Ethan? Yeah, okay, hey, thanks uh, Colin for sharing. Right, this is a uh, half an hour is really pretty short, but yes. I guess uh, yes. yeah, we'll, we'll, we'll 
stick it for the next uh, round of yeah, webinars. Yes, because Jay, Jay is older so today. Yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, thank you so, so much. Thank you very much. Thanks for joining us. Thanks for joining me. I appreciate your time. See you okay. uh, on the event, okay? Uh, the live webinar. All right. Okay, thank you. Hello, Jay. Next, we have Jay Tune. Hi, Jay. Can you see Jay? Yep. Hi. Hello. Hi, uh, Jay. Uh, maybe you want to click share screen. Okay. Let me just... Okay. I cannot share screen while the other participant is sharing. Okay. Uh, okay. Me. Yeah. Okay. We see your handsome face now. <laughs> ah, okay. Great. Okay. Jay, maybe you want to share your screen. So, uh, just a little introduction on uh, Jay, right? Uh, Jay is actually a, a self-taught trader and uh, Jay uh, is, today is going to talk about trading and opportunity in the US market, right? All right, without further ado, Jay, you can introduce yourself. All right. Uh, hi, everyone. So, welcome to this uh, webinar. So, today, right, I'll be talking about the trading and opportunities in the US market amidst this very volatile market environment. So I think the, I'm sure you all know if you have been trading uh, what is happening to the market for the last uh, almost three weeks, the market has dropped about almost 20%. So uh, this, well, while it creates fear, it also brings um, kind of opportunities um, for us to, you know, pick up some stocks and look at some areas whereby they show some value. All right. So um, without further ado, so let me just jump into uh, introduction to myself. So I... Not exactly self-taught. Like. I learned a lot of trading from the market itself as well as uh, from books and all that. So you can see on the shelf behind me, those are all my books. So there are some more shelves that you cannot see. It's just above where I am. So all my trading books are here. So I learned a lot uh, in the last 10 years while trading the market. So what do I trade in? My specialty is in the US market. And I, my bread and butter is equities. And of course, I also do trade other instruments such as equities, options, and futures. Not all at the same time, but um, just picking up different point in time, all right? So uh, if you have seen me before live, you may have caught me at one of those events that I have uh, been running with um, the brokers. So I'm running this kind of um, seminars with C CJS, CIMB, CD Index, as well as CMC Markets. So I was also featured at the Invest Fair, the Traders Fair last year, and uh, also at the Share Investor Investment Outlook uh, 2020, okay? Just to give a very quick market summary. So the market, right, and the chart that we're looking at here is the S&P 500. So in the last 18 days or the 12 sessions, we have seen the S&P 500 drop from a high of almost 3,400, like what we see there, okay? This is 3,400 almost, and then dropping all the way down to... 2,735. So in that sense, right, what happened was uh, the gains for the last eight months have been erased in a matter of three weeks. So this got to set some kind of record, right? Because in my last 10 years of trading, yes, I have seen market gone, you know, minus 15%, minus 20%. But every time it takes time over a few weeks, never once in the history, at least in the last 10 years, that we saw a market that dropped ferociously in this manner uh, over 18 days. Over three weeks, it dropped 20%. So now that's, this really scares, well, everyone. And those people who are not looking to sell and then now they are like, should I sell? Should I sell? You know, the conviction is definitely shaken. So in the latest three years, the closest market condition that uh, resembles anything like this was the crash or the so-called drop in October to December 2018. But the main difference over here, right? So uh, no two markets will be the same. So this is in my very firm belief uh, that no two markets will ever be the same. So market do go up, they do go down. And besides that, right? You, if you're expecting the market to rise or drop in the same way as it did, well, you're here for a shock. It's never going to happen. You may find some similarities, but it will never drop the same way. So the closest one that we have to was in October 2018. That was uh, almost about one and a half years ago. So in this one and a half years ago, right, this drop, you can see that it was a 20% drop. So likewise, it dropped about 20%, but it happened gradually. That is over a period of 
almost three months. So the the drop started in October, early October, and then it came down and then in November, it consolidated. And then after that in December, it dropped down even further. So for a total of 56 bars or 82 days, we see a drop of 20%. However, in the market today, we see a drop of almost 20%. So now this is minus 19%. And we, see, we are seeing some bounce as of yesterday. And this drop is unprecedented because it is a matter of three weeks. So what is this drop based on? Number one, they are all looking at COVID-19. And uh, this is number one. Trade war was already beyond us. So this was the team for last year, trade war. So right now, the market seems to have forgotten about trade war and we are looking at COVID-19. And most recently over the previous weekend, and what we have is this thing called the oil war or oil price war between the OPEC, which is led by Saudi versus Russia. So, uh, well, I would say this one is like a perfect storm whereby you have COVID-19, you have the oil war, and then you have the presidential election that's coming on this year. So, all these events right, are creating a lot of um, uncertainty as well as fears. And this is why right, we are going to see increasingly more volatile events moving forward. Okay, And what has the market or how has the market from, uh, responded to this drop? Well, uh, for FED, for first thing, the FED, FED, the Federal Reserve, they dropped their interest rate by 50 basis points. Okay. So they drop the, their, their interest rate by 50 basis point, bring it down to the range of between 1% to 1.25%. Then shortly after, right, the BOC, the Bank of Canada, dropped the same thing. And then we have the RBA, Royal Bank of uh, Australia, dropped the same thing in the same magnitude. They all cut rates. And just today, BOE, the Bank of England, also dropped 50 basis point. So, well, if you count all the central bank around the major region, right, how many more? banks have yet to cut. Well, the only one that we're looking at is just ECB. So today, right, we also saw that the ECB has, uh, you know, uh, there is some warning that if the, the Eurozone does not respond or does not react, then we may, be look at, we may be looking at a similar to 2008 subprime mortgage crisis level event. While uh, I may not entirely agree with that statement or that view, but right now, um, get the whole world dropping their interest rate and right now ECB is close to zero interest rate. If they drop, they will go into negative interest rate. So let me see. I mean, I mean I'm excited to see what kind of response do they have uh, to meet with this kind of drop, all right? So uh, back to this market itself, we can see that... Uh, where are the strengths? Where are some of the opportunities? So right here, right, what we are looking at is actually from 20th of February. So this was right at the start, before, right at the top where the market have not dropped, okay? And all in the last 18 days or the 14 sessions in the last 18 days, in the last three weeks, we have seen that the market, so obviously the S&P 500 ETF is over here. So this is SPY. So SPY has dropped by a magnitude of 14.4%, about some rebound yesterday. So where are some of the leaders in this market? Well, for sure, we can see that staples, number one, we are seeing some strength in staples. And then uh, this is obviously on our number one list. And on number two, the one that dropped um, second list is healthcare. So... That's healthcare. And number three, it's over here, utilities. Well, is that surprising? Definitely, these are not surprising because if we are looking at the various sectors that mix up the US economy, we have some sectors that are aggressive or so-called the growth sectors. We have some defensive sectors. So defensive sectors you tends to be staples. Okay, so defensive sectors tends to be um, staples, energy, then healthcare, um, materials maybe, yeah. So uh, utilities, definitely. These are all the defensive sectors. Apart from that, uh, so in this defensive sector, right, the idea is no matter how the market is doing, no matter how the economy is doing, these um, sectors, right, they should still go on as usual, although they will be affected, but to a smaller degree. And this is exactly what we are seeing right here. So without a doubt, in the last 14 session, we can see that all the sectors 
all, including the market itself, all loss ranging from 6% all the way to 35%. So what is this energy? What on earth is this energy? Why is it 35%? Well, because of the oil, um, the oil price war. So the oil price war has led to um, energy tank severely just in this week itself. Okay, so let's just discount this and ignore that for now. And uh, we can see that some of the strength is in um, staples, healthcare utilities. And these are the pockets of um, you know, opportunities that lies in this current volatile market today. So um, of course, you can wait for a broad market rebound and then look for you know, some, some um, stocks within the growth sectors, the aggressive sectors. But if you have to be in the thick of action right now and if you are trading, your best bet is to look for the one that is showing, in this sense, relative strength. So uh, staples, healthcare, utilities, these are the three right now that are on my list that I'm looking at and I'm spotting quite a fair bit of utilities, uh, a lot of counters in utilities that are showing this, okay? So um, I will show you some examples and uh, let's move forward. So in XLP, right, this is consumer staples. The top 10 companies are some that I think would ring a bell and it, is, it is, should be very familiar to all of you. Procter & Gamble, Coca-Cola, PepsiCo, Walmart, so among all these, right, Philip Morris, Philip Morris is a tobacco company. So among all these companies, I'm looking at Walmart, um, quite a, you know, um, there's some very good things or very nice things that I'm seeing in, on the chart for Walmart. And I will share this with you later part, okay? And on healthcare, we have Johnson & Johnson, United Health, Pfizer, Merck, Airbot, Mr. Myers Scripps, and all this. These are all the top 10 um, these are all the top 10 holdings, okay? So um, as I'm going through any point in time, right, you have any question, please um, send it to the Q&A because I will be able to see it on the Q&A and then I will answer live over here, okay? So now, uh, utilities, we are looking at Next Era Energy. It is a very, very strong stock since 2019. Next Era Energy, we have Duke Energy, Dominion, Southern, and there is another one that is not in this top 10, which is American Water Works, AWK. That is also another very strong one, okay? So, uh, if you have any question, uh, be sure to just uh, type it, okay? So, now, will you drop further? This is the million dollar question that, you know, everyone is is thinking of, including myself. And I have received many questions from traders, retail traders, um, and, and some students of mine that ask me, uh, hey, Jay, do you think this market is, you know, is finished? Is it, is it gonna go down further or is it, is it the end? So where is it gonna go? So to answer that question, right, I rather not use an opinion. I rather not use um, those, you know, very, textbook things like um, candlestick, chart patterns, and all that. Well, none of this, um, if you are trading, maybe I'm making a very sweeping statement over here, but personally, I do not use um, chart patterns, candlestick patterns to help me make my decision. I make my decision based on statistics. And in this case, right, I am, uh, one of the things that I'm looking at is market breadth. So one of the market breadth metrics is this thing called the uh, 52 weeks high, uh, 52 weeks low on the New York Stock Exchange. Okay, so... Looking at this, right, this is the 52 weeks high minus the 52 weeks low on the New York Stock Exchange. We can see that every time it comes here into this region over here, um, the last time this was 2008, then after that we have the um, August, August, um, October 2011, then we have the Black Friday, not Black Friday, Black Monday of 2015 where Dow Jones for the first time in history dropped more than 1,000 points. So uh, that seems to be a very common thing, especially in the last three weeks. But that, back then, it was a huge thing, okay? So this was the, oh, uh, the August of 2015. And then we have um, January 2016. And then we have the December of 2018. And then finally, here we are right now in um, March of 20. 20. So what is one thing that you see on this chart? Well, every time, right, you can see when there is a major market event, um, the new high, new low is going to go into deep inverse. So 
by how much? Because there are just so many stocks that are listed on the New York Stock Exchange. Um, can we go like super negative? No, there is a finite number. And majority of the stock will go down, but of course we will find a few shiny bright stars that lies among on the New York Stock Exchange, which is by far one of the largest exchange on the US market. So in this sense, right, every time right, I use this market breath to tell me, hey, if since every or 90% of the stock have already gone down to this level, can it go down any further? The chances are, Yes, it can. Yes, it can. But it's a very, very low chance. What I'm likely happening, uh, you know, what is likely going to happen is that the market is going to go sideways first. So this is for the professionals to get in either to accumulate or to further distribute their position. But without going through uh, a sideways phase, we will not be able to know that. So right now, even before um, witnessing the sideways phase, right, we can see that the new high, new low is right at the extreme near the bottom already. So it comes to this uh, pink color box that I have. So um, personally, my own opinion, don't take, don't take my word for it, but just look at the statistics. Personally, I do feel that yes, the selling has been overdone. It may continue to go down after consolidation, but before that, I don't think we are going to see another, you know, five, six percent downwards every day, that kind of movement, because most of the stocks are already beaten down. How many more can join them? Yeah, that's my point. All right. So this is one of the things that um, I am looking at, this is one of the things that I'm looking at. And if you have been trading, I think you should be looking at such things as well. Okay. So, um, here, so at any one point in time, if you want to know like what kind of questions and, uh, again, once again, just ask, okay, just type it in the Q and A, I will be able to see it. And, uh, over there, let me see. Uh, so I'll be able to see that and in Q and A, oh, let me just put it to a side. Okay, so now uh, today I'm going to share with you what I'm going to share with you here, right? So having talked about some opportunities and what are some likely market movement, uh, what are some of the likely behavior on the market? Well, I want to share with you one way that I use to uh, help me tell where is the turning point because I saw so, right just now there was this question uh, how to tell using ta where is the bottom this is by victor and i believe this is a question that's posted to colin not to me so um how to use ta to tell the bottom well after this section victor if you're still here it will answer uh your question in my point of view okay so this is something that i use if you were to look at these two points right how they link up actually it is through uh trend lines okay randomly if you just look at any two points in time right you would not be able to know what is the, uh, what are the connection between these two? But if you have trend lines like this, this is something that I swear by besides using support resistance. Trend line is something that I swear by to help me project, okay? Not to predict, but to project my turning points. And then of course, after projecting the turning points, I know where prices are slated to have a reversal or a, some form of reaction. Then I wait for my confirmation. So, uh, first thing is have to have thesis. At least you are knowing where to look at. And then after that, wait for confirmation. Is what you predicted or so-called what you expect, has it happened? If it happened, then yes, it reacts. If not, well, maybe it's not going to react the way that you uh, envision. Okay? So in this sense, right, um, what does trend line tell you? Um, number one, trend line tells you the speed. Okay? Trend line tells you how fast does the price change? It tells you how fast the price is climbing, how fast the price is dropping. And of course, when I'm talking about trend line, I'm not talking about the very short term trend. I want to look at the long term trend because at any one point in time, right, what most traders are looking at, uh, at least those uh, that I know that's trading a sizable, uh, a sizable income, uh, I mean a sizable account, they are always looking at a long term trend and they are mostly looking at areas of value based on charts, not based on fundamentals, okay? So whatever that I'm going to share with you, right, it is based on technical point of view, not so much as of a fundamental point of view because um, my trades are not that long duration enough, okay? Not long enough for me to go and dig so much into the fundamentals. Although I do filter away some companies based on fundamentals, but my decision is always based on TA. So that's my trading style, all right? So the second thing that, trend line should tell you it is the anger and it is this anger that is the most important. So in this case, right, um, it 
kind of infuriates me, right? When I see people drawing trend lines that are like this. So if you have a trend line that is like that, ah, okay. So, uh, okay, CH, you have, a, you have a question on how do you get the market breath chart. Okay, I will share that with you just in a minute. Hang on for that question. Okay, so um, in this sense, right? Going back to this, I am looking at this kind of chart and it kind of infuriates me because a lot of traders, right? Uh, they draw lines like this. They know how to draw support resistance. They have a resistance line over here, okay? Support line and then they have multiple different angle trend line like this and like this and like this. And then when I ask them the million dollar question, okay? When I ask them this million dollar question, where will it turn? Or where is considered to be cheap or expensive? And then they will always give me that bewildered look. They will be like, huh? what, 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 what do you mean? Why is cheap? Why is expensive? Well, at the end of the day, if you draw so many lines, from my opinion, right, is if you draw so many lines, it doesn't, if not, answer these two questions. Number one, where is it going to turn? Number two, where is considered cheap? Where is considered expensive by the market participants? If you cannot even answer these two questions, your lines have been drawn in vain. Okay, so this is why, right, um, this way of drawing trend line, every time I see it, it kind of infuriates me, although I don't want to comment that much, but I was like, no, that's not how you draw, okay? So in this sense, right, um, the way that I approach trend lines and use the trend line to uh, project my turning points, number one, right, I always stick by these two um, so-called so -called, uh, rules. Lah. Number one, right, I always find the accepted angle. So that's number one. Number two, okay, so what do I mean by accepted anger? In accepted anger, right, this word here, accepted, means that it must have been tested many times. So this means that in this sense, right, the price trend, it is like the best fit anger throughout this price trend, number one, and it must have been tested many, many, many times. So when you see a line that is, you know, tested so many times by the market itself, then, well, you can assume that this one is the accepted angle, okay? So this is number one. And then after that, right, after you find the accepted angle, actually your job is very simple. Your job, right, is just to clone this same angle onto other swing points. So when you clone to other swing points like this, so this is where the swing point I'm looking at. If you look at here, this is sometime a few years back. You can see that a few months later, it projected the turning point here, here again, and again, and again. So is there a definite time frame that you can use this? Well, I, the way that I draw, because I'm basing it on long-term trend line, I'm able to project the turning points even years down the road using the same angle, okay? So how long a trend line am I looking at? I'm always looking at somewhere ranging from five to 10 years. And I always start from the weekly chart and then I move on to the daily chart. So this is how uh, the process of drawing these trend lines. And the first step is always the hardest, which is to find the accepted angle. Thereafter, right, you, all you need to do is just to clone to other swing points, like here, here, and here. So moving forward, what we are gonna make sense of this drop, right, is that if let's say, based on this chart, if the market is going to drop, okay, if it's gonna come down, where is it gonna to go to? It is likely to go at where this bottom pivot or this swing point is, projecting it forward, because no two markets will be dropping at the same horizontal level, because if everything was to drop on a horizontal level, then the market is just going sideways. So even in a sideways market like STI, you still have a little bit of trend, okay? So this is the practitioner approach, so I call it, of how you draw trend lines. So uh, here are some things that you need to take note. Number one, right, you need to, uh, okay, so let me just, okay. So uh, number one, the, it, must, it must have a trend, the trend must not be parabolic. And then after that, uh, second thing I do is the pivot points. So if you have not drawn pivot points or used pivot points at all, I encourage you to check that out, okay? So I still have five more minutes, so I'm going to run through the case study. So uh, to answer CH uh, questions, right, to answer CH question, um, this is where you can get 
the trading view on trading view this is something that i use um i use mahn minus maln so this is the and the high and the low okay so this is the high and the low of uh, 52 weeks new high new low on the new york stock exchange okay so let me run through some uh charts so in this case right um i'll give you a disclaimer as usual disclaimer please do not buy or sell based on what i'm about to share with you it is based on information and education point of view all right so even on STI, like I said, if you draw the 10-year trend line, in this sense, the 10-year trend line, it is still mostly upward trending. So if it dropped, right, combining what I shared with you just now, in the trend line, if it comes down, I am expecting, right, at least this area whereby the S2, okay, so this is daily, so this is monthly pivot level S2, uh, sorry, S3, this is where it's going to hold if it comes down. If it goes up, here is going to be a resistance, then upwards and upwards, so on and so forth. Okay, so this is how I combine the two of them telling me uh, what kind of market or where are the turning points. So this is on S&P 500. Likewise, on the S&P 500, let me zoom it in. You can see that the market bounced because of the monthly pivot. So this is something that a lot of market professionals are looking at. So bounce off the monthly S1 and if it goes up and the next level up, I would say is in the conjunction here. Um, around 3050, of course, 3000, this will be the next resistance because it's a round number. If it goes now further, I am expecting this level to hold or this zone here to hold. And combining this with the market breath, I think, okay, I think that's where if it's going to go down any further, I want to see some form of support over there before I go in and buy, okay? I don't want to be catching a falling knife. Now, um, here are some of the, the sectors I'm looking at. Utility, a very, very strong sector. You can see it has not dropped as much since the pullback. Okay, So it seems like when a broad market is doing a pullback like this, right, um, a lot of money has shifted into safe haven such as utilities. And you can see there are some form of buying, selling in this area that leads to this very too large indecision candle. So some of the stocks that I'm looking at includes NEE. So in this sense, NEE, right? If I were to pull up like this, uh, you can see that NEE, it is holding pretty well. So in NEE, what I'm looking at here will be, uh, the upside definitely will be here. Okay, that's the upside. And then uh, the downside turning point, I'm looking at this range about 250. So uh, I want to see how prices react at these two levels before I decide whether should I be buying or selling. So meaning if it comes down to this area and I find that this area has very good support, then I will be looking to buy this and then get out at the next turning point, which is here and there. Okay, so that's how I would do it. And um, AWK, this is another stock, that another stock that is pretty strong. You have seen it has not dropped much, and it it seems to be pressing against the upside of about one four one. And uh, I'm looking at this level to break. And if let's say you were to do a pullback, this will be a very pull, good pullback level, about one two one three four first followed by 128.5, okay? Then after that, Walmart, another one that is presenting very good opportunity. Instead of it going down, Walmart has, you know, retraced and popped back above this high over here, which I think this is quite nice. I want to see whether this high will be taken out. So if it does this, bounce off here, and that will be my eventual target. Not so much here, lah, okay? So I'm waiting for a break of that. So this is what I'm waiting uh, for a break of. And also another one that I am looking at will be uh, Visa. So another one I'm looking at is Visa. So you can see Visa, it has came down by quite a lot. And um, I'm quite happy by the prospect of Visa, both fundamentally and on the chart, because if I were to zoom out all the way out, just look at where Visa chart is, man. It's going sky high, yes, but never, never buy the breakout lah, in that sense for uh, this kind of very strong trending stock. So this actually presents a very good pullback opportunity, at least um, from my point of view. Lah, okay, so this is, uh, this, uh, given the 30 minutes that I have, this is what I have to share with you. All right, so we'll gen register there uh, and we'll see you tomorrow. Thank you. And uh, the recording will be sent to everybody. Lah. All right, thank you.